Welcome back this weekend for our Marketing Roundtables. John Payne, Kevin Dooling. Well, we talked about it in news. USDA had a few shockers in the latest WASDE report. Kevin, we saw a significant cut to the all wheat crop, most of that coming from that spring wheat Durham crop. Do you think more cuts are possible in the future just based on crop conditions out west? I do, from what I talked to, or for who I talked to back there. Um, we're looking at, you know, USDA put in their report a 3% abandonment on spring wheat. And man, I, I can't help but think that's going to be 25%. Um, and then the yields are getting on the stuff they don't abandon or are not good. I mean, it's, uh, and then, and then that moves up into Canada. So you've got Canada's production too high. You've got the U S too high. So you've got, um, yeah, more cuts are coming. It's going to be really interesting to see what, um, how this goes, but it's it's not a fun not a fun year for the North Plains or for yeah, the North definitely. West. And, and John, so. you know, we knew that there were drought issues, heat issues, and that heat coming back next week. We knew some of those issues in the wheat crop. Why do you think it caught the trade a little bit by surprise, and and we didn't know the extent of that possible damage? Well, I think the the, the report kind of set the bar for a certain degree on the uh, on the winter wheat as well, and I think that you know we saw an increase year over year in winter wheat by you know, 100 million bushels, and on the on the on the uh, the KC side, even more than that, and that was offset by losses from the spring wheat. So we have a bumper crop or close to it on the on the KC and the Chicago side, and on the Minneapolis, we're losing it all. So I think the market now looks at uh, you know the potential for future acres. You look at 650 to July 22 KC, and you kind of wonder who's going to be out there pushing increased acres at can see wheat at 650 when you've got beans at 14 and and corn in the you know the the fives the sixes so right i think it was a takeaway from the market i had you know kevin next week now i know you're in the pacific northwest you have had some relentless heat the forecasts are for that extreme heat several above 100 degree days in some areas uh, out in the pacific northwest and the west next week so for the like the later planted spring wheat crop and some of that plant that's already struggling what is that heat going to do to production next week? Oh boy, you know, it's, you know, the wheat game's pretty well over. You know, I don't see much, you could rain from the next two, three weeks and it wouldn't help the wheat crop much. So to me, the wheat crop, the, you know, that bed is made, you know, the, the guys harvesting spring wheat in the Northwest, I got a guy that was getting 10 bushels an acre and other guys getting 12. And, you know, the North Plains are gonna follow that same same line and so it's really really going to be frustrating so the heat now is is going to be a corn more of a corn and bean thing and so i think you know like we've got like say the two corn crops as john was talking about earlier and you know that western corn crop northwest belt it's going to struggle in this i think yeah, John, what are those two corn crops? You know, this week we saw some areas needing rain, like eastern Iowa. They actually got some rain. South Dakota seeing some rain. And so as you have some of that rain hit, yet in the western corn belt, you have the eastern corn belt that has been getting rain. What are the stories right now in this corn crop? We saw a sharp reduction to Illinois uh, ratings last week. You know, it's tough to, for me to get too bearish on, on moisture uh, as far as yield goes. Um, but... I think we kind of look at a trend yield in in the eastern part of the Corn Belt, whether it be Ohio, Indiana, uh, Michigan, um, Illinois. I think has done well. Uh, eastern Iowa, you know, guys on the, that I talked to are sitting on monster monster production. But um, I think the big thing about the the, the acreage report and going back to the end of June was that the increase in acres that we saw came from the areas that are in drought right now. So North Dakota, uh, South Dakota. Western, Mon Western Minnesota, those are the areas that are seeing switchovers from spring wheat to beans or corn, uh, and, and they're, they're, str they're struggling mightily. So I, I, I look at where we are on the, the trend line fits here, and I think we're above where we'll be on beans and in corn. You know, I don't know if the East Coast can, Eastern part of the belt can carry what we're going to lose in, in, in North Dakota and South Dakota. Well, John, you kind of mentioned it, but last weekend on the show, we also talked about is there still a story in soybeans? And so I want to get your take on that later on U.S. Farm Report. We still have a lot to cover. Kevin and John will both rejoin us later on the show.